Welcome to the Clarified Realty Podcast, exposing the real estate secrets your agent doesn't want you to know. Here's your host, Tom Clary. Welcome to the Clarified Realty Podcast. I'm Tom Clary and I'm your host. I'm a real estate agent here in the beautiful state of California, Los Angeles to be exact. I'm here with my co-host and buddy, Ron Bruno. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing well, Tom. Thank you for asking. Good. Well, we're going to do another one of our uh, news podcasts. We got a really good response to our last one, so I'm... I'm actually really excited about getting going, getting this thing going. Yeah, here. me too. Absolutely. Yeah, it's just Ron and I talking. So uh, why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, what's your uh, first story for the uh, the week? All righty. So this one comes from uh, a Buzz Buzz News US. It's, is that it's a real website. I yeah. I mean, it could be fake news, but <laughs> who knows? everything is suspect nowadays. That's so. right. That's right. It came from you know. If, if I have, I I don't know. My my dad. He was very kind. He gave me a. Uh, an Apple iPad, uh, and, and there's a little app there for news, right? right. So the Apple News app, the Apple News app, and I set it for the category of real estate. So every week I go through and I scour and look at all the news stories. Good. And yeah, so it was kind of you know makes makes thanks this, thanks dad exactly. You're making our podcast better. Absolutely, absolutely. So this one comes from uh, the credible source of Buzz Buzz News. Um, the, the headline <laughs> I'm is I just tell I don't think it really exists. I, I don't is know. it called Buzz Buzz? It's, 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 it's not Buzzfeed. News Buzzfeed is an actual thing, Ron. I mean, it could be part of it. I don't know. It just says it says news dot Buzz from now on. I'm on, I'm only calling Buzzfeed <laughs> Buzz Buzz. You should. It's, I, oh, is that from Buzz Buzz? That's right, from Buzz Buzz. Oh, I saw it on my Facebook feed. It's from Buzz. Buzz. Buzz buzz. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So here's the the headline. Mm -hmm. How much of an impact are foreign buyers having on the U.S. housing market? Right. Those pesky foreigners. Well, you know, look, and it's interesting. Well, go ahead and tell us what they say. Yeah. So it says foreign real estate buyers with deep pockets are often blamed for rising U.S. home prices and national inventory shortages. So what they've done is they have sent out a quarterly survey of 100 real estate experts and economists, and it was uh, sponsored by our, our best friends at Zillow and conducted by <laughs> Pulsenomics LLC. Uh, so they sent these out to all of these, you know, these these experts in the industry, and right. they said, okay, you know, in your opinion, are foreign nationals, are, are foreign buyers... Uh, the reason why prices are getting bid up in America. So survey went out and that's and they 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 got their results. Okay. And that's the result was. The result was that they actually are not really all that impactful when it comes to rising home prices. Yeah. And they're they're not they're not really much of a factor. Well, I, I, and and by the way, it, it takes a real brainiac to figure out that the they're not. I, I, I mean, I, out there on the market, that that used to be an issue. Uh, I'd say three years ago, three four years ago. I mean, because there was bargains, right? The reason that all the Russians were coming in, all the Chinese were coming in, was because it was they can buy like two for one. Well, I mean, the U.S. was on sale, right? right. Any time <laughs> where the U.S. has a recession, you have foreign buyers where they're like, okay, I'm not going to buy this flat in China because it's way overpriced. But it's surprising. By the New way, New York looks like that thing's on sale. You know, last last year this time that was twenty million dollars, and now I can buy it for half that price. I'm gonna go buy it. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? I read at one time that like the price per square foot in Hong Kong, you you would it would boggle your mind. Oh, it's insane. It's insanity. Absolutely. And Absolutely. not like for some sort of huge palatial mansion. We're talking like one of the condos in the middle of the you know city. Right. So yeah, of course they're looking for bargains here. That makes total sense. And there was a time when I remember hearing stories where uh, you know every lo- uh, I think. Seventy five percent of loan originations uh, in, or, or, or the, I'm sorry, no, the the pending sales in Orange County were all Chinese. The, the, it was yeah. almost entirely Chinese. Well, I for mean, one period of time. Karen and I, we live in the, you know, I mean, we, we live in Arcadia, right? right. Which well, is like about ninety percent. Yeah. I mean, not not to stereotype, but it's 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 literally about ninety yeah. percent from from China, from from Asia, right? Yeah. In terms of the the people, so. Uh, I mean, it, it's a very real thing. Now, according to these panelists, they're saying that foreign buyers are having a modest effect on market inventory and pricing. 
Uh, modest. Modest. So it, what they're saying really is what's what's really driving prices higher and uh, the biggest challenge, it's not from foreign buyers, it's actually from a lack of affordable housing, right? Yeah. So well, yeah. we, we talked about that with Ben when we had him on the podcast. And then we also, the other aspect of it is, uh, you know, just... The fact that there people aren't selling low their inventory, houses. right? So low inventory. That's, I mean, guys, this is not this is not some sort of genius, you know, theory here. Yeah, I mean, there, people aren't selling their houses. That's right. What, and what's interesting is, you know, the reason why I chose this story from Buzz Buzz News is because <laughs> not just the all the name, honey that's fit to print. That's right. All the, I think that's their headline. That is, you know, right? that that is what they say. All the honey that's fit to, fit to print. But you know, really, it's it's there's such it's such a scapegoat. You know, yeah. there's so many people. Everybody's that are looking like, for somebody to point the finger right. at. Right? They're like, no, it's because of the foreign buyers. That's why. Maybe in pockets, maybe in Arcadia. That's why they're building the wall, issue. for God's sake. That's right. That's right. Because but, they can't buy our homes anymore. Exactly. No, it's bullshit. That's right. Yeah. So you know, and and a little segue to this whole thing is, you know, I I get questions from time to time about, you know, I have some, you know, and it's usually a, you know, it's an attorney or it's a, uh, you know, another realtor. It's, it, you know, I get these questions about foreign. You know, don't actually, you don't talk to other realtors. No, 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 no. You, you ask me these I am questions. the only person. Only one, to. only one. Uh, but I get calls and people ask, they're like, so I have a, a, a buyer and they're foreign national. Can they buy this home? And, you know, what's interesting is a lot of people misclassify. Okay. Right. So someone who is here on a work visa or someone who has a green card, right. they are not foreign nationals. Right. No. Right. So just step by step, what you've got is you have a U.S. citizen. Right. Right. So someone who has gone through the citizenship process, whether they were born here or not. Right. They're a U.S. citizen. Right. Right. Then you have someone who is here and they've obtained a green card. Right. right. They're commonly called a permanent resident alien. Right. Or I should say commonly is would be green card. But, you know, technical term is a permanent resident alien. Right. So they have their, you know, their their status and they can buy a house just like anybody else. Sure. Right. Just like a U.S. citizen. Then you have people that are here on a work visa. Right. Right. So they're from another country. They come here. They're working at Activision down in Santa Monica and they get a work visa. Well, what we look for as lenders, we actually look at the classification. Right. So there's certain classifications that may or may not allow that person to buy a home. Right. Right. So the most common one, they're here because of, you know, X amount of work and they have that particular classification. The easiest thing to do is just send me a copy of the visa. I look it up. I go through my list and say, yep, that lender is that. That's good. We yeah. can use that for that. Now, foreign national. This would be the equivalent of you visiting France. Okay. Right. As an American. And you want to go. May we. And you want to go buy some property, yeah, right? And you go and you put down some money and say, "I'm I'm buying this property," you know, it's fantastic. So, uh -huh. c'est magnifique. I love the France. <laughs> I want to buy a house on the Champs Elysees. <laughs> yes, exactly. C'est magnifique. So, magnifique. anyways, so that's essentially what foreign nationals do here, right? So they are a citizen of another country. They go in, they buy a plot of land in the U.S. They buy a home, and you know, typically the idea is they have to buy it all cash, right? right? Right. But with foreign national, if you're buying it as a second home, right? So if you intend to live there, you're not going to rent it out, then you only have to put down 40%. Right. Right. And then if it's an investment property, then it's 45%. Right. So yeah, it's a big chunk of change. But if your expectations are that you're going to put all cash, well, now here's a way you can start to establish credit. And you also have that ability to... Uh, I mean, just, you know, you're not, you're not putting all your eggs in that one basket. Yeah. Right. So that's a little bit about foreign nationals. Got it. But, you know, look, I, I think that everybody is try <clears throat> trying to find some sort of reason why there's so little inventory out there. And I think we're going to get also, we're going to discuss that a little bit more in the, uh, the next uh, story that we have, but in terms of how it's uh, affecting the, the market as a whole, but and look, it, it ain't it ain't that it's the Russians. It ain't the the Chinese. It's it's they they are long. I, I think they're long. I mean, I'm not saying they're they're completely gone because you know, like any smart buyer or an investor out there, they're they're going to buy the house and not the market. If they found a deal here, it wouldn't matter if you know it's the bad you know the market is no longer in their favor. Um, so yeah, I don't. Uh, th I hear this this news story and I kind of go, yeah. 
yeah, that's that you're kind of late to the party because we, I mean, I saw that about two years ago. So, yeah, yeah because there's no deals out there. Yeah, right. When there was like 10 vacant houses to every one, yeah, of course, there was plenty of, you know, people rushing in to take advantage of it. Yep. So, yeah. Okay. What's the next story? All right. So this one, it, it, so it's kind of a combination of, of three different uh, sources. So, you know, I, I'll, I'll go with the, the most credible one first. <laughs> this is Please from Bloomberg, do. right? All so right. Bloomberg, right? So Bloom, Bloomberg is a credible do one. Do we have there another buzz buzz story, Ron? No, 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 no more buzz buzz. Okay. Uh, so this says, uh, so this is from Bloomberg. This was yesterday. So it says Fed Kaplan. So Kaplan is uh, the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas president, Robert Kaplan. He is sticking to his rate forecast despite inflation weakness. Okay. Okay. So that's that's the headline number one. And then this one is from the Daily Reckoning. So this is a website called <laughs> DailyReckoning.com. Now this says more bad news on the state of the housing market. Yeah, on this one. Okay. So there's so stay with me. All so right. this is the second one. And then I'm, I'm already getting angry, Ron. Fresh off the press. Today just happened. The jobs report came out. Right. Right. No, that I didn't know. Yeah. You did know that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. So what's interesting is the Fed is now saying, or Kaplan, he's saying, I'm sticking to the regular forecasts and I believe there's going to be two more raises. Right. Right. Now everyone's thinking, okay, well, you know, Trump's policies, they're not going through. Everybody hates Trump. Trump hates everybody. And rates are going down, and you know, it, how could the Fed raise rates in this environment? It's just going to keep. It's just going to keep going down. Yeah. No, not necessarily, right? Right. So, so, Kaplan, he he specifically said he said that he is going to stick to his guns, right? So he he sees that there will be continued raises in the, you know, later this year. So the next one coming up is in June. Okay. Right. So that's the one to look forward to. And then, By the way, that mm-hmm. makes, I mean, they've been kind of artificially suppressed for so long. I can't say that I'm in disagreement with this plan of action because it's just, it has to eventually start to be regulated to be something that's, you know, realistic. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can't punish savers forever. No. And you also can't build up so much, you know, just, just you know, I guess it, what, it, what basically what you you don't want to have is you don't want to have inflation right. and you definitely don't want to have stagflation. Right. Right. And, and when you get into those particular instances, then you can't keep up, you know, you have to suppress rates. And if you suppress rates too quickly, and if you do it in a manner where you, you just, you have to hit the emergency shoot, then it hurts the rest of the economy. Right. So you've got to be, you know, you have, you have to be judicious when it comes to, you know, making those particular rates rise right yeah. but everyone's thinking short term and they're thinking oh you know it's gonna you know all that stuff all, all of the expectations it's all off the table because you know the president's having some issues in washington and it's just simply not true now the bad news what they're saying there is they're actually it's pretty interesting so they're looking at pending home sales now this is now this is the other website that you were talking about the daily reckoning the daily reckoning correct all right so so what they're saying here is the pending sales are actual sales so it says one only the closing is pending and around 90 to 95 of such sales go to closing within a couple of months so what they're finding in this is that uh, you have the sales and then you have the pending home sales and historically, there's been a little bit of this, uh, you know, some a little bit of this fall off on the pending home sales side, just with natural attrition and everything else, right? Things sometimes they, they, they don't go the right way when it comes to a real estate transaction. But what they're saying is that uh, lenders and, and real estate agents and, and just the, the whole industry, it, 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 it gives off the appearance because they're actually pushing more and more. So instead of having 90 to 95, it's actually more like 90 to 100 where all of them are going through, right? So they're actually saying that it seems that there is some force that is pushing these deals through, okay. right? So because they see something on the horizon, right? So that's, that's, that's what Daily Reckoning's standpoint is. Other thing is they're also talking about Right now, there is a there's a ceiling, there's a budget ceiling, right, for our deficit. Mm-hmm. And what they're saying is later in the year, when you get into October, you're going to actually look at Congress where they are going to be 
down in the trenches and looking at potentially raising the debt ceiling. Right. So what happens when you raise the debt ceiling, you issue new bonds, right? So you issue new treasuries. And when you issue new treasuries, what happens is you create this massive supply mm -hmm. of those particular bonds. Right. And when you have too much supply, what happens with prices? Price crashes. Price goes down. Right. What happens with yields? Yields go, go up. up. Right, so that can have the uh, the effect on mortgage rates Going down out. the line yeah. that we have in the fall. So everyone's thinking, oh, you know, it's going to be, you know, we're gonna we're gonna go back and we're gonna, uh, you know, revisit the one six, you know, one sixty on the ten year. No, no, not in my personal well, opinion. I don't think we're gonna get well, there. Let's. I want to go back to the, the their conversation about the uh, the pending uh, mm -hmm. the pendings. So what are they saying? Is there are they saying that? What what are they saying is pushing it through that the the, the ninety two now it's a hundred percent going through the it, rather the, everything's closing. Yeah, so it's saying that. Uh, let's see here. So it goes into well because I mean look if there's uh, the way that I feel about the whole pending and what I was kind of understanding when I was reading this it's kind of that thing we discussed before where you know pending ho home sales are down. Uh, that means that the market is starting to, you know, slacken and be not so uh, robust. But I'm seeing it as something completely the opposite of that, that there's less pending home sales because there's less pending homes out on the market. Right. Well, and it's it's different, right? So it's not necessarily, it's a little bit of a misnomer. misnomer. So, right. So what they're saying here is, you know, it, Right now it's 90 to 95 and actually, so I, I correct myself. So it's right now they're saying it's 90 to 95%. And then it says when only 85 to 90% of sales close, that's an indication of a market with conservative credit standards. It's a good time to buy oh, if I you qualify. Got it. So they're letting everybody through the transom right now. That's right. Okay. So that's I what. Get it. So that's what they're saying. They say when buyers are they and saying sellers that? go into panic mode, seemingly every piece of junk makes it to closing. So what they're doing is they're they're taking a very normal reading that's out there, and they're showing that wait a second, if if normally some of these deals are going to fall off because people don't appro because, get approved right because people don't get approved because you know someone decided to you know you know get a gift at the last minute and wasn't you know qualified or you know whatever reason then that's just normal attrition but if they're overlooking those types of things then that means you know that they're but, actually they're not being conservative they're being a little more aggressive and they're just throwing everything in okay but there's so many things can explain that 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 have nothing at all to do with it being a like i mean look i know that as an as an agent one of the things that were really kind of drilled into us from the beginning is to make sure that somebody's approved before they go out correct right yep so i think before there was more of a openness especially when there is all these mortgage products out there that were like, you know, uh, stated income and, you know, hey, we'll, we'll deal with it when we get to the deal kind of thing. Right. You know? Nowadays, m most agents won't even go in a car with you unless you're, you're approved. Most good agents. Most good agents, right. right? But I mean, but I think that's kind of the majority of agents mm -hmm. now. I don't think that that's, so that would, exp that would be a partial explanation sure. is that, yeah, more things are going through because we're not doing the stupid stuff we were doing before. Yeah. That, I mean, that's a good explanation. Absolutely. I'm not saying that that's the complete explanation, but it's definitely no. a explanation for right. what would be possibly. And then that, and on top of it, that there aren't a lot of pending sales because there's not a lot of, you know, sales out there. Well, yeah. That's true too. Right. So when you, when you start to, you know, exclude and, and you start to isolate the, I guess the denominator, if you will, and you short shrink that, then you're you're actually going to be increasing the actual, you know, the rate of, of things that are actually closing, right? So these are... But, you know, and it's so funny, I mean, even from the title of the damn site, the daily reckoning and, and all mm -hmm. that kind of thing, everybody wants to be the, the, the person who is like saying that the, you know, the 40 days and 40 nights is coming. You know, everybody wants to be Noah and everybody wants to get the, the, the you know, the giraffes on the boat. And not, you know, it, it, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes Noah was, you know, there was one time Noah was right. <laughs> you know what <laughs> right. I mean? When it counted. When it counted. And yeah. that's, and I get it. But, but it, there's so many people who want to be the first person who call it. And, right. you know, and it, and it preys on people's fear and it keeps people on the sidelines instead of actually finding out the information they need to find out. And actually, you know, if you let these kind of stories be the thing that keep you from actually getting involved, then you deserve it. 
You right. deserve to, to, to literally watch the world and the market pass you by. That's right. And that's and that's the reason why, you know, I want to look at it from three perspectives, right? So no, I'm not know. saying be stupid. No. Uh, you want to be informed, of course. Absolutely. And be cautious. No yeah. one's saying that. Right. But at the same point, don't like use that to give you a reason to not act. That's right. That's right. Don't buy into the conspiracy theories. But you know, it's interesting to take different perspectives uh, with with a, a very simple thing. And but you can twist data right. around any way you want it. To. It's true. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, today, so the the non farm payroll, so the jobs report, <laughs> uh, it actually. I was literally. I woke up and I'm going. I wonder what the non farms. Right. Pay. Yeah. Jo- <laughs> jobs report. We call that. Yeah. Uh, so you know, economists they were looking more towards the one. And it was 138. 138. We, yeah, we lost 138. Right. And they also Thousand revised jobs. down the previous two months, mm. um, 66,000. So now we're at about 121 compared to 181 during the 12 months prior. You mean things aren't as good here now? Yeah. And I don't know who... In the economy? I, I don't know if you can blame Obama on this one. Uh, uh, come on now. <laughs> so the unemployment rate fell to 4.3, which is great. And, you know, I mean, it says mainly do the individuals dropping out of the labor force. <laughs> um, how and, and what's interesting is that That's now, like curing your cancer because your leg fell off. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah That's yeah. not really a good thing. No, definitely not. Yeah. Definitely not. Uh, but what's interesting is that, you know, so now you have a you have a weak jobs report and you, you're right now we're in the middle of earnings. Uh, and right in June 13th or 14th is the Fed meeting. So coming up in a couple of weeks, the Fed's going to meet and they're going to say, how is this going to affect? You know, yeah. are we going to raise rates, which, you know, affects borrowing in the U.S., or are we going to hit a pause on it? I mean, right now they're they're saying 90%, right? So they're, they're saying there's a 90% chance that, that they're going to raise the rates. Um, who knows what's going to happen? Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm reading this from our secondary department, at my company. And, you know, I mean, they're, they're, he actually says this is funny. He says that, um, you know, it broke the 10 year broke through 2.19 and then it looks to finish the week at 2.14. I'd have to double check what it actually is, but he says the next target is 2.09 followed by a sub two. And he says, and the pre-election zone of refi goodness. So it's, you know, we always, we always like lower rates when it comes to refinances. I don't, not personally, I don't think it's going to get down there, Yeah. but you know, just three different perspectives. If you were a betting man, what are you thinking in terms of, uh, interest rate raises over the next six months? Over the next uh, six months. So I would say there may be a little bit of pullback. We might touch to two. I don't see it going below two on the 10 year, probably finish the year, I don't know, two, four. 4260. Okay, so what somewhere you, in that range. What would that, in terms of interest rates, in terms of like a 30 year, what would that do to the 30 year? Yeah, so right now, you know, we're at about four and an eighth. Uh, so I would say might be touching on 4.625. Okay, 4.75. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy, but look, but that's still money out of your pocket. That's right. That's still money that you don't get anymore, and spending power you don't have. So look. I've said this now a number of times and we know that it's a pain in the ass out there in the market because there's not a lot of inventory, but if you're not jumping on the boat now, you're, you're literally going to be missing out on the, the cheapest money that it's been in a long time. And on top of it, appreciation that forecasted, you know, for the next year, like year over year in California, it went up 6%. So over the last year, Prices have gone up 6%. It looks like this year is going to do even better, at least right now. And they say that it's going to go up 10%. So that's appreciation you're going to miss out on. So if you're not literally, you know, at least sitting down and looking through properties, I don't know what else to tell you. You know, this is this is going to be the, the time before you miss your shot. That's just, uh, just, uh, if you miss out here, you're going to, you, there's every likelihood you could be priced out. I'm, I'm just, that's my concern. I'm actually very concerned about people who have not or are not getting into the market right now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how many, you know, more dips that that you are looking for. And I mean, right now, if you look at it from the seller's perspective, we actually touched on a recent all time high in Los Angeles. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We tied it. Yeah. So if there is a quote unquote top, I don't know what one is. We may make a new top. 
Yeah. But if you're waiting for a signal, I mean, I, I would think that would be one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then as far as interest rates, I mean, when it comes down to it, I mean, I don't, I don't know what, what people would be waiting for, you know, I mean, are they going to wait to, you know, are they going to do the history and, and take it, you know, look at the 10 year for the past five years and time it absolutely perfect. And they're going to wait for that very, very, very moment. Or you are can, they going to just take those gonna steps? Gonna you're going to miss it. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm, I, this is a, a real, a real concern that I, I really truly believe that this is going to be a country of haves and have nots. And the haves are going to have property and the have nots are going to be renters. And if they don't jump on sooner than later, they are going to miss that, that, that window. It's just, it's that simple. I mean, I don't know how else to put it, you know, for the folks out there. I, 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 I literally, I, I worry about this. So anyway, let's move on to the, uh, what's the next story? So the next story is from the LA Times. Ah, now that's more respectable than the okay. Daily Reckoning or Buzz Buzz. And it starts with good news. Good news, everybody. <laughs> so this says good news for home buyers with student loan debt. Okay. okay. Go for it. So what we're talking about here. This is actually happy. I'm actually very happy about this. I, this makes sense. Yeah. I, I actually like this as well. You're so right. Fannie Mae. So it says mortgage investor Fannie Mae has just made sweeping rule changes that should make it easier for you to purchase a first home or do a cash out refi to pay off your student loan debt, which I mean, I think this is fantastic. I think this is really helpful. So I'll give you the, the bullets, right? So what we're looking at is when it comes to student loans, when... I run a credit report. It will show me here's all of your here's all of your your outstanding debt, right? So it'll actually tell me here's your balance, here's your monthly payment, and it then fills in and, and filters right into your debt to income ratio, right? So I'm not actually handwriting all that stuff out. It comes from the credit report, which is fantastic. It makes our job lots lots easier. Now, in the past, what we would have to do when we would look at the student loan is we would have to look at the actual number that's on the credit report and that is the monthly payment. Even though you may have your own program that you worked out with the particular student loan servicer. So there are a lot of people that have income-based repayment programs, right? So you're on paper and on the credit report, it may show $400 is what is owed, but you may have worked it out with that particular servicer where your monthly amount is only $200. Right. Right? right. And if it shows up where your student loans are in deferment, it used to be where we'd have to hit you with 1%, yeah. which sometimes, I mean, it, was, it probably would be the, you know, the most extreme when it comes to that monthly payment. I mean, this is the difference of getting a home or not. Right. Right. So what, what they were saying is use actual payment for student loans versus what's on the credit report or 1% of the loan amount. So that is really good news. Right. That is very, very helpful. Now, another bullet here is when you do a cash out refi it's different than a traditional rate and term refi yeah explain the both of those so that people kind of understand the right. difference between the two yeah in so, simple terms in simple terms so let's say you're you 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 bought a home five years ago and it was a five hundred thousand dollar home you put 20 percent down and you know your loan started at 420 and and you know five years down the line now your loan is at let's say 380 Okay, so now your loan's at 380. You want to refi because you think you can get a better rate. And we have the conversation and we go ahead and, and we're looking to refi. But you have a little bit of equity in the home. And let's say you have $20,000 of student loan debt that you want to just pay off with a refi, right? So that's considered a cash out, right? Right, Because it's not rate in term where we would just do the loan for 380. You're actually adding on additional debt. Right. Right. So let you know. Let's say the loan would then be four, four ten. Right. So if you had a thirty thousand dollars, you're using that difference to pay your loan. Exactly, because you know if your student loans are at seven percent and your mortgage is at four percent, then you know from the arbitrage standpoint, that makes a lot more sense, right? To go ahead and just pay it off. Yeah. Right. And just keep it keep it really simple. Uh, now, in the past, when it when you had you know, when you bundle those two things and you pay off student loans, then it's considered cash out and cash out usually is a little bit, it, it is, it's a higher rate, yeah. right? Cause there's more risk associated with it because mm -hmm. you're not just paying off 
the mortgage itself. Right. Now you're adding on. Right. Right. The same thing is if you took money and, you know, took it out yourself and had that as cash. Right. So if you did a cash out refi, that's the same thing. So what they're saying is when you consolidate a student loan as part of a cash out refi, it's not going to be an extra hit on the cash out. Usually it's, you know, 25 bips. Right. So that that's pretty big. Yeah. So that's another great thing I think is really helpful. Right. Uh, because now here's a great way to get out from under those student loans. Yeah. Right. Which is a real burden. Yeah. I mean, look, anything that helps out, you know, and especially with the people who have these these burdens of these amazingly huge college loans, anything that kind of eases the pain as much as possible, that would be, it's great. Would you, are you, have you had any come, come across your, your, your door with this, this? I mean, not since this came out, but yeah. I mean, it always comes up. Yeah, right. You know, it, all, it always resurfaces. It, I mean, it's, it's just something that, you know, people go to school. And they have massive student loan, right? Yeah. They either qualify or they don't. Now, yeah. here's a way that more people can qualify, which right. I think is fantastic. And then the final piece here is if someone else is paying a bill, so let's say, you know, mom and dad are paying your car payment, you know, you buy your first Honda and they're paying for that. If you could show 12 months of payment history that mom and dad are paying for it, we don't have to hit them. That's great. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. So all these things. So Fannie Mae, what they're doing is they're actually, you know, looking at it from a realistic standpoint and they're, they're, they're trying to, you know, have, you have all of these people that are saying, you got to loosen the lending standards. You got to, you know, think just, you know, make sense when it comes well, we to We understand things lending. were crazy for so, for a period of time and we, we, we screwed the pooch. Right. For a period of time. Oh, yeah. But at some point, you guys, you got to understand, you got to loosen things up a bit because, mm -hmm. okay, now we, you know, we've got really strict. Now we got to, you know, because, but now the market is suffering because of it. Right. And we need to bring people back out in, out of, into the market. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that is by kind of loosening up some things here and there. So that's right. This is very positive. I think. I mean, that it makes sense. 12 months of history. So if you have someone who's making the payments, why, why have to hit them if yeah. it means buying a home or not? Cause they're yeah. going to be paying for it and they have a history of doing it. I get it. If it's like, you know, Hey, just show that your, you know, your parents paid for it this month. Right. right. No, Absolutely. you have to have a history of it. Right. 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 Great. All right. And uh, our last story of the day, I think, is, uh, <laughs> I love this one. Uh, so uh, our friend Jimmy Buffett is getting in the real estate business. Yes, he is. Jimmy well, he's Buffett. always he's always been in the real estate business. Yeah. But in this particular case, yeah, well, it was all yeah, burger joints, right? I mean, or did he did he have like other? Oh, yeah, Margaritaville restaurants. Well, restaurants. Yeah. yeah right. Absolutely. So yeah. there's Margaritaville restaurants. He has Margar Margaritaville resorts. You know what's so funny? Let me, let me, I want to take a little side trip here okay let's, now, let's do it uh the crazy thing i want to have a margarita in here yeah, in this I, we should have had a margarita but a little you know <laughs> uh little drink uh but here's the thing imagine imagine this sitting down one day mm -hmm. right even if it took you two days yeah and writing a song one song mm -hmm. right and recording that one song so maybe three days right okay and literally building it an empire from a song, right? Now, there are those parrot heads yeah. who believe that, that he's, uh, you know, in, um, it's not just one song, guys. Right. Yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, that's all I know him oh, from. Man, there's a whole, song. no, there's a whole station on oh, Sirius. God. Jimmy Buffett, Margaritaville oh, station. Oh, my God. And it's, a, it's not just, a, he's, he's, uh, he's not just a singer. He's a piece of, my, uh, a play, what is it? No. Oh, shoot. What is it? Uh, it's a... Well, he's a son of a son of a sailor. He is. <laughs> I think That's you know more one. about this than I... I maybe Dude, I'm from Hilton Head. Come That's on. hysterical. Man. Yes. Um, I said, oh, that's what I was going to say. I've met Jimmy. I, I have a story. Have you that. really? Yes, oh, I, I got to hear this. Oh, yeah. Um, no, it's he's not just a singer. He's a state of mind. It's kind of okay. like, yep. you know, it's those guys who the, the go from concert. It's like the deadheads. Absolutely. Kind of thing. But I just, I mean, thinking about like the burger joints mm -hmm. and, and all that just from mm -hmm. a song. Well, and think, I, I completely agree. And I mean, a lot of people, you know, so, some people may see him as a one hit wonder. But wait, 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 before we go, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Let's, let's bring it. Let's talk about why we're even talking about him in the first okay. place. All right. So and then we'll, we'll go we'll into the story. Thing. I got a little ahead of myself. I apologize. All right. but so we'll go into the story. So this I'm waxing one, poetical about Jimmy Buffett. That's but, right. That, yeah. that, <laughs> but go ahead. So, all right. So, so, uh, you know, I, I'm redeeming myself in terms of credible news stories here. So this is from <laughs> Forbes. This is from Forbes magazine. Forbes, okay. Yes. Wow. So it says, Jimmy Buffett expands his real estate brand amid a boom in retirement communities. That's oh, amazing. 
Jimmy Buffett's recent announcement that he is expanding his Margaritaville retirement communities is shining a light on a booming sector of the real estate market. So going further, around the U.S., the number of multifamily housing starts for people 55 and older rose to 26,000 in 2016 from just 8,000 in 2010. Yeah. So man, these guys, they're Guess boomers. What? They're Guess They're getting what? older. People are getting old. They're getting older. They need to be taken care of. They do. But you know what? They're not, they're not just, you know, here's the thing. Baby boomers. They were the dom, you know, they always were the dominant force in the market. They, you know, the sixties, the seventies, every single trend that drove the economy and that drove just the, the culture in, yeah. in America was driven by baby boomers. Absolutely. So guess what? They're going to continue to keep moving forward at their own terms. Absolutely. They They're are. not going to do what their parents did and go to the old age home and, you know, and, and, and go away peacefully. No, they're going to rock and roll. Right. Well, but, and, well and let's, let's wait, wait, pull it back there for a second <laughs> because my parents live in a retirement. I mean, I, okay. I will speak for this. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of partying that goes down in these Heck retirement groups. Yeah. It's not just the boomers. These, they, they, you know, they'll drink you under the table, those folks, because I mean, they know they know how to party. I mean, I, I grew up in Hilton Head Island, right? So, so I, I grew up on a resort. Yeah. Karen calls me a cabana boy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so she that. says she marries a, married a cabana boy. Uh, but what's, what's, what's I love about this particular story is it actually, speaking of Hilton Head, they're actually launching it in Hilton Head. That's fantastic. It is awesome. So it says the project, and this is from the Island Packet. So this, I was actually in the Island Packet many, many years ago. Uh, but this is called, uh, so Hilton Head Island's paper is called the Island Packet. And it says the project called Latitude Margaritaville Hilton Head is a partnership between the Jimmy Buffett inspired Margaritaville brand and Florida based developer Minto Communities. So it says the community will be built on the site of the southern portion of the Hilton Head Lakes, which the developer has purchased. And then, you know, going a little bit down here, it says plans for the 55 year and older Latitude Margaritaville Hilton Head calls for the construction of about 3,000 homes, Whoa. a 290,000 square foot retail center, and amenities such as a pool, fitness center, and tennis courts. Wow. Do you know how involved he is? I wonder if it's like, do, do you think he, or he just licensed his name and I think he's incredibly involved you and think so? absolutely, absolutely. He, you say that, you know, he started from a song, but what he has done is he has capitalized. Oh, it's a brand as the, br it's the brand. Oh, it's the brand. It's the Jimmy Buffett Margaritaville brand. He has capitalized on every trend. You know why he, he did those restaurants back in the eighties and nineties? Because that boomers had kids. Oh yeah, and we were, you know, they wanted to take them to, you know, something that was family friendly while they so, drank their margaritas. While they drank their margaritas and still had fun. So, you know, Hooters may not have been the right place to take their kids. <laughs> By the way, the wings are amazing at Hooters. Yeah, so Hooters wings are fantastic. They're the best. They're great. But Margaritaville was a nice alternative, right, yeah. to sending your kids to a bar, and they right. made it family friendly and everything else. So, so Buffett is. He's gone, you know, according to the lifestyle of his core audience. He's been audience. moving along with his audience. Yes. That's smart. It's smart. S brilliant man. Brilliant smart. man. And now, do you think mm -hmm. that like we work, they're going to have, you know, running margaritas in the, uh, instead of beer? Oh, I mean, if whatever. they could find a way to get Viagra on tap, I think they would do it. <laughs> Thank you, Ron. You were quite but welcome. You went there. Yes, uh, I did. I did. Well, I mean, you know, that, that's a whole nother story about what's going on in, in those communities. But uh, <laughs> they they absolutely, I mean, Hilton Head's a party place, right? And and they're looking at multiple locations. So yeah. they're not just looking at Hilton Head. You know, they're looking at Florida. And it's it's just a way to just, I mean, really enjoy and then also find like-minded people. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. You know, I, I get it. I get it. It's fantastic. I mean, and there, and I, I, I have to say, I, one time I saw this incredible, I don't know if it was a documentary or some show that was on uh, some cable channel that was, uh, it, it, first of all, there was this old thing that was back in the 80s called Heavy Metal Parking Lot. Have you ever heard of it? No. Oh, it's amazing. It's an, If you ever have a chance, to, I think it might be on YouTube. And it was a, a guy who was uh, working in a cable TV station thought, you know, I'm going to take a camera and just go to the Judas Priest concert hmm. da down the street. He wasn't a fan or anything like that. Right. And I'm just going to interview people in the parking lot. And it's literally oh. become like this 
amazing thing about wow. people. You know, people look back at it as like the snapshot in time of, you know, these drunk, you know, 14 year olds. Right. And, you know, tailgating. Oh, definitely. Definitely watch it. Oh, I got to check that out. But, That's pretty cool. But somebody did a very similar thing, but for the parrot heads. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It was like yeah. a half hour to an hour of the, the best stuff I've seen. I mean, literally, it's like yeah. these drunkards, like in a, in a good way. I'm saying that oh, yeah. really a fun it made me want, I mean, if I could stand the music, I would, I might even go. <laughs> Margaritas definitely help when listening to I Jimmy Buffett. I think that maybe you need to have a little alcohol on you in order to really kind of enjoy it. But. So my experience with Jimmy Buffett. So, oh yeah, tell me, how, yeah. you met him? I have. Oh my I God, have. I got to hear this. I have. And it was, a, it was a, it, just one of those snapshots in time. So, um, so first of all, you know, uh, Jim, Jimmy Buffett, he's been to Hilton Head, you know, multiple times, he had concerts there. Yeah. Uh, but my story actually, uh, when I used to work for the Regal Entertainment Group, you know, the movie theater company, right. um, Edwards Theaters and Regal C sure. Cinemas and all that. Yeah. I was in charge of the West Coast when it came to the meetings and events team, okay. right? So I was a national account manager and my client was New Line Cinema, okay. right? So, um, and because Regal is owned by Anschutz, he also owns Walden, Walden Media. Oh yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. So Walden Media and New Line had a film called Hoot. And Hoot was all about uh, the endangered owl and it was this whole film, it was, it was with New Line and Walden. And to help promote it, see, Walden's really big when it comes to education, yeah, right? So right. they take sto they take books and they turn them into movies and like family friendly. Like the books that your, your kid would read, yeah, from like Lab, you know, C.S. Lewis the movies, Lion in the War Witch, yeah, Lion Wardrobe. Witch in the Wardrobe, yeah. like all those great books and all of that. So yeah. it had good messages and all that, right? Stuff. So what we did is we I'm actually hear how Jimmy Buffett works into this. But okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> okay. So so what we did was uh, to get teachers involved and help you know bring the curriculum of Hoot into the into the uh, encourage the teachers to actually bring the curriculum and get people excited for the movie. We did this whole satellite broadcast from the Irvine Spectrum. Oh wow! Right, okay. so in Irvine, California, we took over the move one of the actual auditoriums in the movie theater and had this whole satellite uplink. Right, and it was my client, and I was there on site and the whole thing. So it was my deal. So I was there helping. You know, I, I was a little bit of a producer, like myself, like like you, right? But yeah. not quite. Yeah. Um, so I was there to you know help everybody. And I remember we set up this this theater where we had a stage and the reason jimmy buffett comes into this is because he sang a song for the movie oh, so he okay. was he was a big writer and he also you know it had a couple of songs in the movie so he helped promote it okay. right so what we did is we had the the carl hyacin who's the author oh I of Ho carl of hyacin Ho yeah you've heard oh, of that name yeah, yeah of course yeah so he he was there okay and then we had the director and the producer and then a couple of the kids and we did this big satellite uplink and we had teachers. So it featured, te you know, had teachers in all of these locations, satellite broadcast, the whole thing. And, and then Jimmy Buffett, he played a couple, you know, he played, you know, the, the, his song from the movie. Okay. Right. And then he played a couple of the, you know, everyone that, you know, all the teachers loved and everyone, and, you know, we had margaritas in the theaters and everything. It was Wait, awesome. They had margaritas in the theater, even though oh, it was yeah. a kid's movie. Oh yeah. I mean, why not? I mean, they're teachers. <laughs> So they're teachers, right? So it was a teacher's <laughs> event. It was after hours and everything else, right? All right. So the teachers obviously were like, Timmy, hey, I'm a little take... drunk. Hand me some popcorn. Yeah. So no, kids weren't there. It was oh, just okay. the teachers. Okay, just it. teachers. All, right. all teachers getting together. And, you know, it was it was a huge thing. So right. before the whole thing kicked off, I remember I'm going through and I'm looking, you know, there's like the green room and, and all this stuff was outside of a movie theater, right? So there's cords and everything going around and, you know, trailers set up for all the, the, the sure. you know, the, the talent. And I remember I'm walking up and I, I, I go outside and this big, you know, African-American guy is just standing in front of me. And I said, are, are you with Jimmy Buffett? And he's like, yes, you know, I'm, 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 I'm Jimmy's bodyguard. And I said, oh, okay, fantastic. You know, um, you know, just hang tight. Uh, we'll need uh, we'll need Jimmy out and in, in, uh, or we'll need Mr. Buffett out at uh, like five o'clock. So just a heads up. And he he. All of a sudden, Jimmy Buffett w comes from behind this guy. He's oh, he was standing the entire dude. time? He was standing the whole time. Oh, he goes from behind. He's like, hi, I'm Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> it was like one of those Russian dolls where, you know, you take one on that comes out. Totally. So I, I, and I'm like, Mr. Buffett, he's like, no, just call me Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, but I can't. That's so funny. When you said Mr. Buffett, part of me was like, "How could anybody call him Mr. Buffett?" I, I mean, I, you maybe know, Warren Buffett. Oh, you'd call Mr. Buffett. Possibly, but, possibly. But Jimmy Buffett. No. I mean, but still, I mean, you know, I mean, it's a client, right? So I had to be professional in the whole thing. But he was like, "No, just that's call just, me Jimmy." He's like, "You know, you want tickets? Just let me know. We'll take care." I mean, wow. the whole thing. I, he's such a great guy. Wow, such a great guy. So is he involved? Absolutely. Oh. Is he brilliant? One hundred percent. Wow. Yep. Interesting. All right. Well, I've now I have newfound, not newfound respect. I always respect anybody who makes an empire. You know, I gotta, I gotta respect it. So, but now I'm thinking he's a nice guy, which makes me like him even better. He's a fantastic guy. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that's be- about it for today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear them. Please don't hesitate to leave them for us on our Facebook page, Facebook.com/slash Clarified Realty Podcast, all one word. If you have any questions about real estate or you're looking for someone to help you buy or sell a home, remember, I'm actually a licensed real estate agent. I'd love to help you out. So please email me at uh, tom at clarifiedrealty.com or give me a call at 818-335-7662. Don't be shy. Give me a ring. Uh, For more exclusive bonus content and advice between episodes, please check out our website, www.clarifiedrealty.com. Also on our homepage, you'll find links to helpful buyer and seller guides that can give you some great information for starting your home buying or home seller process. So definitely check those out. I'm on Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram as well. My handle for all three of those are at Clarified Realty. Please leave us feedback and reviews on iTunes or in the comment section on our page. Remember, together we are stronger. So if you have any questions or ways that we can make this podcast better, I definitely want to hear them. So please let us know. My amazing theme song, Hey Now, is from the band Wolf. That's Wolf with two Fs. And please go check them out and like them on SoundCloud. They rock so freaking hard, they not only know where your lost shaker of salt is, they hit it from you, you drunk freaking parrot head. And just a little disclaimer, I'm licensed by the California Bureau of Real Estate. My license number is 0171-5353. Ron's is... Guaranteed rate, NMLS 2611, NMLS ID 558706, California. The advice we give is only for properties located in the state of California. For all other states, please contact your local real estate agent or real estate professional. Well, that's about it, Ron. You all good? Yeah, I'm going to get a margarita. Let's go get a margarita right now. Thanks for coming, everybody. And remember, the greatest thing you can ever do is make someone feel at home. Take care, and we'll see you next week. What you gonna do with your